Have you ever wondered how your physique stacks up against your favorite fitness influencers? Or wondered how big they actually are in reality? I think that we can all agree that many natural fitness influencers look jacked out of their minds to levels unattainable naturally in their photos, but can look disappointingly flaccid when face to face. So that leaves a question. How muscular are they really? And how muscular are you compared to them? Today, I'll show you the best way of measuring how muscular a person is so that you can test yourself and measure your progress. And I'll also be using this method to showcase some of the most famous fitness influencers and celebrities as examples. It is also a tool many people use to see how likely it is that a person is natural or not. The method we are using today is called the Fat-Free Mass Index, or FFMI for short. When calculated, it essentially gives you a number that represents how much muscle you have per unit of height. The scale has been thought to look like this, starting with 18 to 20 for the average looking guy who does not lift, 20 to 21 represents a novice lifter, 21 to 23 represents an excellently built physique, 23 to 24 represents excellent genetics combined with years of training. 24 to 25 was thought to be the natural limit according to the original study that proposed this FFMI scale, and anything 25 and upwards therefore must be attributed to steroid abuse. Although you will soon understand that the natural limit far exceeds 25. So, while not perfect, FFMI seems to be the most appropriate way to measure muscularity as it considers a person's weight, height, and body fat percentage. Obviously, we can't rely on weight alone, as two people weighing the same can look drastically different. And the same can be said for height. But if we subtract fat mass from total body weight, we then are left with fat-free mass or lean mass, which is simply the weight of everything except fat. Lean mass includes bones, muscles, organs, and fluids. Next, lean mass and height are put into a simple calculation that gives you your FFMI score. I have put a link to the FFMI calculator in the description. But before you go and check your FFMI, there are some important things to know before you do this. Firstly, you must be able to calculate your body fat percentage as accurately as possible. And your body fat percentage needs to be between 7 and 18% for this equation to be most accurate. As this was the range of body fat that participants had in the original study. Although, you can probably get away with 5% to 20% body fat without losing too much accuracy. Now that is out of the way, I'll be showing you some of the most popular physiques in and out of the natural lifting community. For our first example, Thor himself, Chris Hemsworth, weighing in at 215 pounds at 6 feet 3 inches tall and about 10% body fat. Bring up the FFMI calculator and enter these values in, which gives Chris a ripper FFMI of 24.24. Is he natural? It's Hollywood, so unlikely, but is his physique attainable naturally? Absolutely it is, but not for everyone. The most reliable and valid way to measure your body fat percentage for this equation is by using the same method they used in the study. Which was the Jackson and Pollock six site skin fold method. Although you probably won't have skin fold calipers available. So try to estimate it off these images. Next, we have Jeff Nippard, a very well-known science-based content creator who has also competed in natural bodybuilding shows and powerlifting competitions. He weighs in at 160 pounds at about 8 to 10% body fat, standing 5 feet 5 inches tall, giving him a very impressive FFMI of 24 to 24.5, placing him way up here on the scale. In contrast to Jeff, we have William Lee, who also looks pretty damn jacked in his videos, where a lot of people seem to think he is not natural and that his physique is unattainable naturally. Well, let's put up the numbers and see how insane his FFMI is. Weighing in at 153 pounds, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall and about 5% body fat. His score is 20.9. This places him way down here on the scale. Do I think this physique is naturally attainable? Clearly it is, 
But is this low body fat percent sustainable long term? For most people it won't be, but for William it could be. Especially if you investigate his videos, you'll notice he never displays his legs. This is because they are his weak point. They hold more fat and are not so well developed. He may look to be 5-8% to body fat in his upper body, but his lower body looks to be closer to 10 plus percent. The keen-eyed will have noticed this second value, the normalized FFMI. So, you may be wondering, which number is the correct one to use? Well, it depends what you're looking at. Normalized FFMI was an attempted correction of the initial FFMI equation. Because they observed the taller man with an FFMI of 25 looked to be of the same muscularity as a shorter man with an FFMI of 23. The adjustment made it so the shorter person's normalized FFMI matched the taller person's. The way it adjusts the FFMI is as follows. At 5 feet 11 inches, there is no adjustment, and the further below 5'11 you go, the greater the normalized FFMI multiplier is, and the higher above 5'11 you go, the lower the multiplier is. So therefore, the original FFMI equation being lean mass divided by height squared is objectively displaying how much lean mass a person actually has. Whereas a normalized FFMI is more of a subjective assessment of how muscular someone looks. As we all know, a shorter person can look more muscular without having to get as big as a taller person. Or as commonly stated, it's easier to fill out their frame. So, in most cases, it's better to use the original FFMI stat. Moving on to the next example, another fellow Aussie, Hugh Jackman. It was stated that when he prepped for filming as Wolverine, he got to 190 pounds at 6'2 and 10% body fat. He looked pretty damn jacked. What kind of monster are you? The Wolverine. When we enter these numbers into the calculator, it gives him an FFMI of 22. This surprised me at first, as in the films they managed to make him look so jacked. But I suppose multi-million dollar budgets are going to allow for some pretty significant video and photo enhancement. This might be a bit of a controversial one. Greg Cookbook Cassette, in what he says was his natural prime just before he started using performance enhancing drugs. He reported he was 33 years old at the time, weighing 179 pounds, standing 5 feet 6.5 inches tall and had about 5% body fat. Interestingly, I was able to calculate a rough six side skin fold equation to estimate his body fat percentage by using skin fold measurements from his recent videos where he looks to be of similar overall body fat percentage. His measurements were as follows, triceps 5 millimeters, quads 5, subscap 10 and ilium 3. Unfortunately, I was unable to find measurements for the abdomen and chest, so I made them up for the sake of the example. I gave his abdomen 4 and his chest 5 millimeters. Hopefully he sees this as fair enough. Now simply put these values into this equation to get his body fat percentage. The sum of 6 skin folds was 32, so x1 equals 32 and his age was 33, so x2 equals 33. So when we fill out the x values, the equation will look like this. So do your division and multiplication first, which gives you this. And then second, do your subtraction and addition, which will give you a body fat percentage of 5.3%. And I'll round down because he looks to be leaner in the old video. Now we can enter this into the FFMI calculator giving Greg a crazy FFMI of 27.1. Now, is this naturally attainable? Not at all for the average or even genetically gifted, but for those with world-class genetics, I think this is possible. This concept of FFMI above 25, while being natural, is very hard for some people to accept as being possible. I can understand this, especially if the person is far from an FFMI of 25 themselves especially if they've abused PEDs and have still not come close. But if you're like myself and have a high genetic set point for muscularity, then it's not too hard to believe that some world-class bodybuilders can manage an FFMI of over 25. I'll do a more detailed video on what I believe the natural muscular limit is in the future. As a bonus, I have done running. Yeah, buddy! Oh, 
Hey, wait! Coleman's FFMI in his prime when he was said to be 300 pounds on stage at 4% body fat. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, giving him a mind-blowing FFMI of 40. Is this naturally attainable? I mean, do I really need to answer this? Even with one in a billion genetics, this is still not possible. Nowhere near. To quickly sum up the video, FFMI is likely the best tool we have for measuring muscularity. The biggest error with it will be predicting body fat percentage. Most people will likely underestimate body fat percentage. It's also better to avoid using normalized or adjusted FFMI, especially considering the original FFMI equation already accounts for some of the frame size increase as height increases. Dividing by height squared makes it so the taller you are, the more it reduces your FFMI stat. For example, someone six feet tall requires 20% more lean body mass to have the same FFMI stat as someone five feet tall. All in all, I hope you have learned something today and let me know in the comments if you would like me to make a series on famous fitness icons and FFMI.